What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching a show that includes both of my favorite things to make fun of. Mid-2000s reality shows and pickup artists. Now, I already know what some of you haters are probably thinking. Chris, you make fun of pickup artists, but they get so much more tail than you. And yeah, that's right, but you know what? Most people do. So joke's on you, buddy. Joke's on you. Today we're going to be watching the 2007 reality show, The Pickup Artist, that aired on VH1. Yes, VH1. That's a first for the channel. We've covered TV shows from Bravo, a and &E, TLC, MTV, and some others. Now, the premise of the show was they took nine virgins and sent them to a mansion, where they would then be taken under the wing of mystery, the master pickup artist. And it pretty much takes the typical reality show format where every episode someone is voted off for not learning enough from mystery, I guess. Which, at first, I could not believe people get voted off of the show. Like, I get it's a normal trope on reality shows, but like, this one? Just imagine, you've got no game. You're at the end of the line here. You think, I'll try this reality show out. It might be embarrassing, but I, I'd like to learn a thing or two, and maybe even win $50,000. And then you get voted off on episode two. Like, what's next, but nothing. Now, we're just going to watch the first few episodes and then skip to the end and see who wins, because I'm not watching this entire season. I watched Black White in its entirety, and that was already tiring enough on my soul. I don't think I could watch nine hours of these guys stumbling around a nightclub trying to trick women to sleep with them. So with all that being said, let's watch. Eight Ordinary Men each has conquered some of the most difficult challenges of manhood. Puberty. Driving. Okay, alright, come on now. Not even five seconds in, and they're stooping that low. For them, it's a puzzle they can't solve. Oh my god. You need to be coached, just like I have a boxing trainer, just like I got taught how to break down. I'm the 40-year-old virgin plus five years. So just say 45-year-old virgin. That was much simpler than what you actually said. Meet the world's most successful pickup artist. A man who goes by only one name. Mystery. Now, I have so much to say about mystery. One, how do they calculate him being the most successful pickup artist in history? I'll wait. And two, he's basically a cross between Chris Angel and Willy Wonka. He's so fucking weird. And there's no way you can convince me that he is not a 700-year-old vampire living amongst us. It's no wonder he was so eager to take on the task of mentoring nine virgins all in a house together. It's the virgin blood he wants. Now, Mystery has recruited two former students, J-Dog and Matador, to be his wingmen as he faces his biggest challenge yet. These guys look like they were on a GameStop like it's the Navy. <laughs> My name's Pradeep. I'm from Boston. I'm frustrated. I'm very confused. I don't know what to do when I'm talking to, to women. And when I do, I just keep talking and talking and talking, and I don't know when to stop. The entire world doesn't need to know that, you know, I in my pants and that I'm uncircumcised. Good call, Pradeep. It's, it's a good thing you went on TV and said it then. That'd be just as stupid as me saying that as a kid I would find a corner of my living room and pee on the carpet, knowing it was wrong. I was old enough to know it was wrong, but I did it until I was inevitably caught by my mom and I had nothing to say because I knew it was fucking weird. So it would be silly if I said that in a YouTube video. People call me Spoon because my name is Steven Poon. Everyone calls me Spoon. I mean, I guess that sort of makes sense. What's your name, bro? How do you get your name? Oh, Pradeep. Nice Pradeep? to meet you. How do you say? Pradeep. I'll call you P? No. Okay, what's your name? You know what? Good on Pradeep. Standing his ground. It's not a hard name to say. At least the vibe that I get from these guys is that they're a much more bearable version of the guys that would be cooped up in a bus together on Next. I had a girl approach me only to reject me. Oh my god. Oh yeah. We were just playing pool, and then we heard the phone ring. And we all kind of got a little nervous, and we all gathered together. I love this typical reality show dramatic editing, where, like, they make a phone ringing in the other room seem like it's the end of the world. Hello? Hi. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Mystery. And I'd like to welcome you to your new home. Nice. <laughs> nice. What? I don't know what there is to be confused about. Or maybe he just can't hear the guy. I don't... I don't know. I'm sending a bus that will take you downtown to the foundation room where I'll be waiting for you. Your journey begins tonight. I'll see you soon. So basically, Mystery has set them up for failure and is going to be sending them into this club with no preparation, no advice, or anything. Just going to see what happens. For those of you who do not yet know me, my name is Eric. They call me Mystery. He was just exuding confidence and charisma. Everyone, this is James. AKA Matador. I hate that they have nicknames. I hate it so much. And they're the lamest nicknames too. Fucking mystery. 
Matador, the other guy. I don't know his name. I don't have it written down anywhere. <laughs> Hi, I really like your style. Okay. I'm Joe. You're very enthusiastic. That's a good start. Okay. He's totally ignoring her friend. Right. He does She's not. I do that. Let's go to the bathroom in a second. He doesn't recognize that what he actually approached was known as a two set. Ah, yes. That definition. Very, very necessary and helpful. So this segment is basically just these guys going in and bombing, and then them in the bus making fun of them and explaining how everything they're doing is wrong. And I thought, okay, maybe they're going to see what exact issues they need help with, take notes, and then coach them on those things. But no, they're just shitting on them. And then they inevitably just go in on their own and just fucking clean house, which I still don't understand how these pickup artists actually work. Maybe they're just going in late enough in the night where everyone's so fucking drunk and they just don't even know what they're saying, but these guys are genuinely fucking weird. I'm not even talking about the virgins, I'm talking about Mystery, Matador, and the guy. Welcome back. So you think this game is tough, don't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah? <laughs> it is, it is a tough game. My friends and I are going to head in now and show you how it's done. So get yourselves comfortable. It's time for us to play. So then after the virgins are, I don't know what to call them. Should I call them virgins? I feel like that's weird. <laughs> so when the boys come back and they sit in the bus and let Mystery, Matador, and the guy go do their thing, they just fucking worship them. <laughs> they think that they're the coolest fucking people ever, which they kind of are. <laughs> I mean, come on. Mr. had such a fire in his eyes. He was zoning in. I mean, he made eye contact with everyone. None of that now, young lady. What's the magic word? I just got in from LA. I spent a week in LA shopping. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. I have an engineer. I need to put some black streaks in my hair. No. You don't. You really don't. So then at the end of the episode, Mystery informs them that nobody's getting voted off because he didn't teach them anything. I guess something good came out of him not teaching them shit. Made it by the skin of my teeth, but I'm still here. So what happened? What happened? Spoon just wanted to go. I think it's just because of his anxiety and everything. And Damn. So now in the next episode, we find out that Spoon's left. Do you remember who Spoon's is? I don't. I had to look it up. Thank God I was able to look him up using pua-celebrities.blogspot.com, one of the internet's greatest hubs of knowledge. Oh, okay, it was him. None of these guys are memorable. Hey, we got a phone call, guys. Who is it? Who is it? Mystery. Hello. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Good. Now, who can guess where Mystery is going to take the boys next in their quest to become master pickup artists? If you guessed in elementary school, you'd be correct. But also, what the fuck? Okay. Each of you will have five minutes to excite, delight, and ultimately entertain these young ladies with your very own rendition of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now I get what they're going for here, but like, don't you think after the second rendition of the story, these kids are just gonna be bored out of their fucking mind? So the first one or two people are gonna have it the easiest? In the forest, so she saw a house, and it was empty, so she You're went really in. Weird. I'm really weird. Now after they're done, Pradeep ends up winning, but it's mainly because he just gets the kids' attention when they're voting, so they always pick him. Not gonna lie, Pradeep is just kind of an asshole. There's a few times where you see it, but he just kind of sucks. Pradeep, because you won the challenge, I'm now going to teach you an attraction gambit. It's called the Spell of Attraction. This will give you the competitive edge. So now this is when the magic happens. Mystery is going to explain the game to the boys and give them some helpful tips. Now borrow your hands for a moment. I'm gonna pretend that you play the role of a uh, female. Okay. See, it, it really allows me to touch and lower my hands. If a girl's interested, she will subcommunicate her interest by lowering her hands. It's called compliance. It's physical compliance. Oh, wow. Right? That's what I'm testing for. I'll then say, do you believe in spells? Following that, go like this, go like this, and you'll be doing that to the girl. I am fucking lost. <laughs> I have the same feeling that I do when someone tries to explain a board game to me for the first time, and I just retain no information. Also, I can't imagine how stupid I personally would look doing this to a girl in the club. If I disqualify myself from being considered a potential suitor, then she won't feel sexually threatened. I'm not after something. If you're speaking and you accidentally brush against a person, you look at her funny. That's all it takes. That was an egg. <laughs> Alright, I think I got it. Ew. 
So now it's time for the boys to redeem themselves and go back into the club and practice their newfound tactics. Except with Brady, he starts to abandon his tactics. For some fucking reason, who can guess why he would abandon these tactics? Is it because they sound silly to say? Because they are silly? Who knows? You believe in ESP? Uh, hey, yeah, this, this is my friend. What's your name? Corey. Corey? What do you guys do? Yeah. Where, what material is that? I don't know what they're running. They're not doing anything we, we talked about today in class. So do you come here a lot? Brady's just getting by on his looks right now. And then this guy, I think his name is... Brad? <laughs> Anyways, the 45-year-old virgin. He's... Not necessarily spitting the best game, but then Pradeep fucking swoops in because Pradeep's a fucking bitch. <laughs> you want, later on, I can show, I can tell you where to go to get good furniture here. Hey, Fred, how's it going? And now they know. Oh, great. Now we have another low-valued male coming in. This is Pradeep. He works in the furniture business, too. And then he just kind of lets Pradeep steal the show. If you want to call what Pradeep does stealing the show. <laughs> Good evening. So now comes the voting off. It's down to two people who Mystery really lays into. He gives them a stern talking to. <laughs> and then there were two. Guys, quite frankly, I feel as if I should eliminate both of you right now. He gives Fred some shit for letting Pradeep come and steal the show. Fred, you let Pradeep just sit in front of you and push you out of a set that you opened and you felt that. Then he starts to lay into Brady for not continuing the method. Like I said, who knows how that could be. <laughs> Brady, you went into a set and then abandoned our method and didn't build any attraction. Looks can only get you so far. So you think I'm cute? I love how he's talking to them like he's their dad. Like he is so fucking disappointed in them. Let's see who gets voted off. I hope it's not the sadder of the two options. Fred? It's game over. Thank you for being a part of this. Remember what I said earlier about like, it would suck to get voted off of this show, especially being the first person to get voted off. Combine that with being the 45-year-old virgin of the group. I will not say anymore. That is all. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Let's skip to the end and see who wins, because I've seen enough of this show at this point. So what I've seen of the last episode is basically their challenge is to go find some new virgin blood for Mystery to fucking eat up. The boys basically have to train this person to become what they are now. Take a new virgin under their wing. And wouldn't you know, it's down to... These guys. I know his name's Brady, because we were just talking about him. <laughs> Forgot the other guy's name. He's gonna be Guy. I didn't get the feeling that Dylan was necessarily attracted to his targets. He would just go into a set, and the very first girl who engaged him in conversation, he latched onto. I do think it's a little bit odd that for the final grand prize, the $50,000, the first place winner, they're being judged on someone else. They're being judged on how well the person that they taught the things that was taught to them at the beginning of the show were implemented. Seems a little unfair. <laughs> this fucking face. I'm excited and honored to officially welcome this person to my social circle. Get on with it. God damn it. Come on. <laughs> our circle. Oh, you gotta be friends with them? What if the stipulation with winning the money is you just have to hang out with Mystery, Matador, and the guy? Like, for a year at least. Cosmo, you are the pickup artist. Yeah, it was Cosmo. I love Cosmo. He's my favorite. I never forgot his name. It makes sense that he won because, like, aside from his whole fear of talking to girls, he, like, is the least dorky, I'll say, of the group. That's the nicest way I can say it. He's the least dorky. Like, he knows how to present himself well, but so does other guy. <laughs> I don't know any of their names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. What if they kissed? I don't know. I'm just, what, what if they, what if they kissed? That would make, if they kissed, that would make this show so much more entertaining. Yeah. How about that? We're fucking gay. We did it for the fucking money. Mwah. Well, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like rating down below. It lets me know you enjoyed the video, and it helps out the channel a ton. If you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can stay up to date on fuck. Hit the notification bell. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.